Welcome to another daily dose of SAP Analytics Cloud. Today, we're going to take a look at aggregations. So we start with a spreadsheet. As you can see, we have a set of orders. Each order has multiple order items. So we bought multiple products. We have revenue, quantity, discount, and we have two different customers. So what we want to find out is what is the average revenue broken down by order and customer? And what is the average item value in these orders? So those are the two numbers that we want to find out. So first of all, we're going to take the spreadsheet and we're going to actually set up a model. So we upload the spreadsheet. We make sure we configure our dimensions right. So making sure we have the date correct, we have all the measures, and then we're going to quickly upload the information into SAP Analytics Cloud. So we got the model now, so we can actually start creating our story. So we're going to add an empty page and we will start with a table where we show all the information. So we choose the model and we're going to add all our dimensions and all our measures to the table so that we can see actually all the data that we have. So for the date, we're just going to show the pl flat presentation. We don't need the hierarchy for now. And then we're going to put the other measures into the table as well. So here we have all the information. And remember, we want to set up actually an average value of the order per customer. And we want to find out what is the average item value inside those orders. Those are the two numbers we actually want to get to. So we're going to make a copy of the table so that we have the raw data always at hand. And now we're going to start building an aggregation as part of our second table. So we set up a new calculation. In this case, it's the aggregation. We're just going to give it a name. Then we choose the revenue as the measure. In our case, we're looking for an average. And as aggregation dimension, we choose the order ID. We want SAP Analytics Cloud to basically aggregate the number for each of the order ID. And we'll take on the look on the right hand side. And as you can see, actually, the number isn't correct, so to speak, because it's pretty much just the detailed item. So as you can see, the revenue, for example, for the first row is 100. And the average says, it is 100. So obviously it is not correct. The problem that we have here is that we created an aggregation for the order ID and we have the order ID actually in the drill. What then happens is that the order ID is still in the drill and therefore the aggregation, instead of doing an average, is basically turning to a sum. So how can we now solve the problem is simply by actually removing the items from the drill. And we will now see that the value is actually correct. So we have a total of 3,280 for customer A with three orders. So it's 1,093 as an average. That looks about right. So it is important for you to understand that when in this example, we create an average for the order ID and you do place the order ID into the table, into the drill, that actually what is being returned is not the average. 
This is very important to understand. So to show again, if we put the order ID in, we actually see a sum in this case. So you can see basically if the dimension that you're using for the aggregation is in the drill, the aggregation turns to a sum. So we do have our first number that we wanted to get to. We do have the average revenue broken down by customer for the different orders. So we're just going to resize the table and we're going to move it away. And then we're going to actually look at our second problem that we're trying to get to is what is the average item value inside of these orders? So you can see each order has multiple items. And we're trying to get to what is the average item value inside of those orders. So we're going to make a copy of the original table again, and we do like we did before, add then the calculations into the new table. So we're just going to make a copy of it. And this time we're trying to get to the average item value. So we're going to remove a few items from the table. And we're going to focus on revenue as the measure. And now we're trying to get to that average item value. So we're also going to start setting up an aggregation formula. So we're just going to give it a name. Again, as a measure, we choose the revenue and we choose the average as the operation. And in this case, as the aggregation dimension, we choose the order item. And as we can see, it actually looks quite okay. So you can see, for example, the first order, which is 1001, has a total of $450 and it has three items. So $150 sounds about right. But what happens if, for example, we take the order ID out of the table? So if we take the order ID out of the drill, I think we can agree that now the formula isn't correct anymore. The average value is not $1,000 per item. So if you take a look on the left-hand side, we have, for example, order ID 1001 with order item 1, 2, and 3. Then we have the order ID 1003 with item 1, 2, and 3. So if we take the order ID out of the table, our aggregation formula basically does the following. It sums up the revenue, in this case for the customer, and it basically counts how many order items, and it's important, it counts the unique number of order items it has. So our order items are always one, two, three. So it's basically counting how often does it have a one, how often does it have a two, how often does it have a three. So we have three distinct order items, so it takes the summary of all the revenue and divides it by three because it found three different order items. So if we want to avoid this and get to the correct average item value, we need to create a combination of the order ID and the order item. So we need to create a calculated dimension first. We combine the order ID and the order item we simply concatenate the strings. And then we set up a new aggregation formula, which instead of the order item, it uses our new calculated dimension. So 
So we use the revenue as the measure, we use the average as operation, and we're gonna use our new created calculated dimension as the aggregation dimension. And now we can see we did receive the correct item value. So I hope that this quick demonstration of the different options was how you can set up an aggregation in SAP Analytics Cloud and what to watch out for was helpful. And I want to say thank you for watching and listening.